Okay. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Viacra video series. I've made this first video ten times because I keep diving deeply into rabbi trails and making this video 20, 30 minutes long. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to trust that you all, whom I love, are studying yourselves approved. That I'm not so darn important that I need to explain everything to you. I'm just here to point out a few points to you. And you guys, you sacrifice. I know that you love the Lord. That, um, that he will show you what he needs to show you. So I will be speaking a little bit in dark sayings, a little bit in riddles. Just like Yeshua says, I speak in riddles and dark sayings because it is the honor of God to conceal a matter. And it is the honor of kings to search out that matter. It's not my job to search it out for you. So here I am pointing these things out to you, and I hope that they buffer and make your studies that much more rich, that much more efficient, that much more pleasing to the Lord. We really get into Vayikra, the first five into the sixth chapter of Leviticus in the next video. In this video, it's kind of a prerequisite, more really of an author's note. You can go straight to video two and not really miss much. This video one is going over previous information that we've learned in previous series and videos that are foundational to some of the things that, uh, that you will learn if you pray for the helper to be there to help you learn in uh, the first six chapters of Vayikra. Why, is, why are those chapters important? All they are is just about sacrifice. It's just instructions on how the priests and the people administer sacrifice. Well, that's, <laughs> that's why it's important. Those things are a picture of what's going on in the heavenlies. Everybody in the world is sacrificing for something. All the time, people are making sacrifices. The world's not messed up because people are failing to sacrifice. The church is not messed up because it's failing to sacrifice. America is not messed up because it's failing to sacrifice. Israel's not messed up because it's failing to sacrifice. Everything's all messed up because people are failing to sac sacrifice rightly. And I'm not just talking about drug dealers and criminals or heathens and atheists. I'm talking about God's people, people who think that they have a heart for the Lord. They, too, are failing to sacrifice just rightly. That's why he sent the helper, because these things are very, very particular. Okay, so foundational information for these first chapters. In Kitisa, we learned how the New Covenant the Holy Spirit being poured out and the law being written on the tablet of the heart was playing out in Moses' life. We also learned about Yeshua's mission statement, more New Testament stuff being played out in the Exodus, right? He rescues and he empowers. We see him rescue the Israelites from Egypt. That's rescue and mercy rescue being akin to mercy, right? And then we see empowerment, twofold mission statement from Yeshua, rescue plus empowerment. We see the empowerment play out as they're going over the Jordan. Empowerment, this hurts to hear, but I think a lie is less painful in the beginning and more painful in the end. This is going to be more painful in the beginning and much better in the end. Empowerment is akin to judgment. They walk hand in hand. God's judgment being poured out on a person. That's why he tells us that we are to be like clay in his hands and that he's going to replace our stony hearts with a heart of flesh. How is it empowerment them crossing the Jordan? Well, God defeated Egypt by his many miracles, and the, and the Israelites didn't have to do much. But when they crossed the Jordan, God was right there with them, but they had swords and 
bows and arrows in their hands. And at that point, they were empowered and they had the faith to fight war in a way that was pleasing to the Lord. And they did. And they won that nation. And it didn't take very long. Egypt was completely destroyed. Whoever was, uh, you know, the Amalekites and the, the giants, it was the Israelites. It was their hand that destroyed those, na- that, those nations and took Israel for themselves. Rescue plus empowerment. I've got a whole video on Isaiah 61, 1 through 3, Yeshua's mission statement. That link should be popping up there for you if it's there. Uh, I'll also try to put one in the description box. Quickly, we'll go over it here. We've got the points of rescue. We've got him healing the brokenhearted. We've got him proclaiming liberty to the captives. We got him opening the prison door to those who are bound, right? That's all rescue. Then we've got our fulcrum point here to proclaim the acceptable year of Yehovah and the day of vengeance of our God. A little clue here, a little bit more pain if you don't know this yet, just a heads up. This fulcrum point from being rescued to empower, this fulcrum point is judgment the day of vengeance of our God, that's him judging the whole world, a whole world that has not accepted his judgment, that have not come to the altar of their hearts and sacrificed their wicked treasures for the good treasures. Yeah. It's people who have not accepted his judgment and you keep putting it off and putting it off and putting it off and one day it's too late and it becomes vengeance. Judgment's purpose is to bring you to him to change you, bring you to him. Vengeance's purpose is to drive you away from him. And most people don't like judgment because they think it's vengeance. Because vengeance is the judgment that society puts on criminals. The Lord puts judgment on his beloved and vengeance on those who aren't to be in his presence. So we've got this fulcrum point, and what does it promise? What's beyond the finish line? What's our prize? Ashes. Mourning and the spirit of heaviness? No, that's what we already have. Those are the wicked treasures that are in our hearts. We need to come to the altar of our hearts. We need to sacrifice those things. And he promises we have to have faith. We have to trust that he's going to replace those things with beauty, with the oil of joy, and the garment of praise. Why? Why does he do all this? He does this so that they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of Yahovah, that he may be glorified. So here we have this foundational idea of the New Testament, sorry, the New Covenant, being played out in certain Old Testament characters' lives. And we have the idea of Yeshua's mission statement being a perfect reflection of the Exodus great portion of the Torah reflects Yeshua. Yeshua is a perfect reflection of God. No man comes to the Father except through Yeshua. Right? Right. Okay, so switching gears a little bit here, keeping those things in mind. Up to this point, we've studied Genesis in the Torah portion cycle. Genesis gives us the creation and the flood. Then it gives us Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob with a focus on Abraham and a focus on Joseph. And then we have our Exodus. That focus on Joseph is Joseph being a picture of Yeshua, is this fulcrum point that changes us from being in Egypt to being in Israel. We see the New Testament play out in Joseph's life, the New Covenant play out in Joseph's life too. We watch him be transformed into somebody who was uh, not powerful enough to even take over the authority of of his brothers, and he was sold into slavery. And then we have him coming to the point where he becomes the second in command of one of the most powerful nations of the earth. It's a picture of rescue and empowerment. And then it's through him and his seed and his work that the Israelites become slaves of Egypt. And that is the foundation for our Exodus story. story. Jacob's and Israel's, Jacob's slash Israel. His sons, Abraham's descendants, 
rescued from Egypt. And that leads us into Leviticus, where we are now. Sacrifice and the tabernacle with its priests. So think about that. We've got this whole book of Genesis. We've got this whole book of Exodus. And then not just a chapter, but an entire book dedicated to how God wants his people to play out sacrifice in this physical reality to be a shadow for us to see what's going on in the heavenlies, the kingdom, right here, right now. It's within us. Numbers, I'm not quite sure about numbers, to be honest with you. I haven't studied enough to give you a synopsis of that. And then after that, we've got Deuteronomy to look forward to. Okay, so that is our, that's our beginning of Vayikra. That is our author's note. Uh, you should see, you should see Vayikra's second video coming up on the screen now. Thank you for being here. If it's not coming up on the screen, it either means that the world is coming to an end, YouTube's algorithms are messing up, or I just haven't made it yet. Uh, but um, you should definitely see a link of it in the description box if it's there. Thanks for being here. I pray that the Father blesses you with this information and that the Helper is with you and that you are uh, answering the altar call, the altar call within, that you will come to the altar of your heart and that you will understand these things so that you can make more appropriate sacrifices before the Lord in the secret place in front of your Father. That you may be called a tree of righteousness. That you may be called His son or daughter. His royal son or daughter. Empowered not to do the deceptive work but to do His work. That you be broken free from the deception within your own mind and that the truth of Yeshua be revealed to you for his name's sake.